Trevor Taylor and I did mine on groundwater. How many of you took a shower and brushed your teeth this morning? I'm sure all of you have been told that when you leave the water running, when you brush your teeth, you're wasting water. According to Huff Huffington Post 2008, states, leave, states leaving the water running while brushing your teeth will waste about four gallons of water. So if you brush your teeth twice a day, every day, you are wasting about 3,000 gallons of water a year. But cities are not the main use of water. According to NGWA.org 2009, the largest use of groundwater is by farmers using it for irrigation. But what if I told you that you could cut the amount of water taken out of the ground by doing a few simple things? With myself being a farmer and a person in general using groundwater out of the Ogallala Aquifer to irrigate my crops and also for drinking water, it has made me think of ways to help better utilize the water and also keep from contaminating it. Today I'm going to tell you how we should all conserve groundwater. First I will tell you how cities should conserve groundwater. Next I will tell you how different types of irrigation that farmers should use to uh, conserve groundwater. And last, I'll tell you a few things farmers can do in general to help conserve water. Let's start touching on how cities can cut down on their water use. Another fact from HuffingtonPost.com 2008, about 95% of water that enters into your house goes down the drain. If you live in an older house, you should uh, do a couple things. To, your, to help conserve the water, you should replace your old shower heads with new ones. According to Natural Voice, our choice .org, 2013, an old shower head uses around five to 10 gallons a minute, whereas a new shower head uses roughly two and a half gallons a minute and gives the same coverage, something like this here. Uh, here are a few things that you should try in the kitchen. When doing your dishes, you should always fill up your sink and not always run new water to rinse them off. Another thing you should do is to keep a cold jug of water in your refrigerator so you're not always running extra water trying to make sure the water's cold. Uh, in your laundry room, you should always wash as many clothes as possible. Always do full loads of laundry. If you have one piece of the clothing that needs wash, wash it by hand, if at all possible. Uh, you should also check into high efficiency washers that will save you water and energy. The last thing you should do isn't uh, pertaining to in the house, it's pertaining to outside, it's watering your yard. If you water your yard throughout the summer, you should do a couple things. You need to try to water your yard at night, not in the heat of the day, so it can hit the ground and not evaporate and you should also try getting by with the least amount possible. Now that we have touched on how you can serve water at home, I'm going to tell you how farmers should try to conserve water with irrigation. According to NGAA.org 2008, 90% of groundwater that's pumped from the Ogallala Aquifer, the world's largest aquifer, is used for irrigation water. Here's the Ogallala Aquifer. It covers roughly 250,000 square miles, reaching from South Dakota all the way to Texas. You can see that Nebraska is the main, main the biggest, or has the biggest uh, part of the Ogallala Aquifer under it. Uh, farmers need to use better irrigation uh, and find more, if, or irrigate at right time and find more efficient types of irrigation. Uh, they should uh, try to get rid of pipe irrigation or gravity irrigation. Uh, with pipe irrigation, you have uh, large amounts of runoff water. And also, if you check with your natural resource district, some of them will help pay for some of your cost of converting from gravity irrigation to a different type of irrigation. Uh, for pivot irrigators, a thing that they should do on their system is change it to variable rate. Farmers should use it because it applies different amounts of water to the good parts of your field. 
and then lower amounts of water to the not so good parts. The type of uh, irrigation that farmers should check into the most is drip irrigation. According to irrigation tutorials, 2013 drip irrigation is the most effective type of irrigation at around 90%. Um, the reason farmers should look into this is because it is underground, so there's no evaporation from heat or wind, and also it is located right at the root zone, so it's directly at the plant. Here's your flood irrigation. You can see running the waters in the furrows, a lot of water got getting put on the ground and not being used very well. Here's your pivot, water evenly, but it's in the air, so your wind has a wind and heat has a large effect on how much actually hits the ground. And now the last thing that farmers need to do besides upgrading their irrigation. With not everyone being able to change their type of irrigation, there are different options. A few different options they should look into. Farmers need to look into seed companies like Pioneer and Syngenta that produce drought resistant crops. They're great for poor soils and need very low water requirements. And they also work great for drought years. Um, another option farmers need to look in is to hire an crop scout. Uh, the first reason they need to hire an agronomist or a crop scout is because they do irrigation scheduling. It will tell you when the best time to irrigate is, and it also will tell you how much to put on so you're not wasting it. Uh, the last reason farmers need to hire a crop scout is not for the fact of wasting water, but it is for the contamination. The agronomist will tell you how much fertilizer you need to apply and when you should apply it so it doesn't leach and contaminate the groundwater. The last option you need to, think, to take into consideration is to get a moisture sensor. The sensors will tell you, tell you yourself when you need to irrigate and make the farmer have the power of deciding when to do it. Here's a Pioneer's Aquamax. Just, that's the type of drought resistant corn. Here's your agronomist out probing and getting your, checking your soil moisture. There are many more ways than what I've mentioned today how to conserve groundwater. I have told you how cities should conserve groundwater, the different types of irrigation that farmers should use to conserve groundwater, and a few things farmers need to do in general to help conserve groundwater. That doesn't mean you can't brush your teeth twice a day, water your yard, or irrigate. Just remember, you need to be smart with how you use it because there is getting to be less and less every day. And doing a few things will help not only help conserve water, but also put money in your pocket. Thank you.